In this video, we'll talk about gout, diagnosis, and clinical manifestation in addition to management and prophylaxis. So gout, one of the most common rheumatologic diseases that we see in the hospital as well as in the clinic. Think about it when a patient who tells you that they were totally normal one or two days ago and suddenly they started to have this joint pain and you, they might mention to you that they have been drinking a lot or eating a lot of meat and high protein diet. Now, you need to know which joints are most commonly involved. So all of us know that the toes are the most commonly involved but most of us don't know that the second most common joint involved is going to be the midfoot area. And after that, the ankles and then the knees. Uh, regarding systemic symptoms, systemic symptoms can be present, but oftentimes not, because gout can sometimes be a local inflammatory response in the joints that they are involving. Now, what labs you need to do? So CBC, leukocytosis, you don't count much on it because sometimes it is leukocytosis, sometimes it's normal cytosis. Now, uric acid, this is controversial. Um, it's not sensitive during the attacks. It can be normal and sometimes it can be low and they presume it can be low because if you have inflammatory response and cytokines are elevated, they interact with the uric acid levels and they can decrease or cause them to be normal. So the question is, is it okay to check uric acid during acute gout flares? And the answer is yes. And there are two reasons for this. First, if it's positive, then that supports your diagnosis. But again, if it's negative, then you don't rule out gout. The second benefit, if you are doing an ultrasound to diagnose gout, then uric acid levels can help you with improving the positive predictive value of the ultrasound as I'm going to mention in a second. Now, if they ask you when uric acid is much more sensitive other than the acute attack, it's going to be around two weeks after resolution of the symptoms. Now, what about the x-ray? Shall you do it? And the answer is, depends. If you want to rule out other diseases, then it can help. And the other thing is, if you are thinking this patient has a chronic gout, then x-ray can help you see a special finding or a specific finding to gout, which is punched out erosions. And they like to ask about this in the exam, so make sure you know that punched out erosions are associated with chronic gout. Now, the last thing is the ultrasound. The ultrasound is the new modality that many rheumatologists are using. So when you use the ultrasound, you want to look for two lines. The lower line, as in the drawing here, is the calcium line associated with the bone, which is normal to be opaque, while the upper line is the uric acid deposits line, which is secondary to uric acid deposition on top of the cartilage. And this what constitutes the double contour sign, and double contour sign has a specificity of around 60%, and it can increase to 90% if uric acid is elevated at the time of the gout flare. And this is one of the reasons that it is good to check uric acid during acute gout attacks, especially if we are doing an ultrasound. And last but not the least is erythrocentesis. Now, all patients who have never been diagnosed with gout before should get an erythrocentesis to confirm their diagnosis. And what we are looking for, we are looking for monosodium uric acid crystals, and these are parallel with yellow polarized light. Now let's talk about gout management. It's very high yield in the exam, they like to ask about it. And we can divide it into acute management and chronic or prophylactic management. So in patients with acute attacks, you want to decide if this is monoarticular or polyarticular. If it's monoarticular, endomethacin should be enough. And actually, any other NSAID should be okay as well. But endomethacin is more studied. That's why it's preferred medicine. Now, if the patient has polyarticular disease, then steroids can be more helpful in these patients. If the patient 
is monoarticular and endomethacin is contraindicated for GI bleeding or uh, acute kidney injury, then steroid injections are the treatment of choice. And if the patient does not want to do steroid injection or it's contraindicated, then you can treat them with PO steroids. So in acute flares, NSAIDs and steroids are the main treatment for acute gout attacks. Now, if these fail, and only if they fail, then you can consider something else like colchicine, for example. Now, let's talk about prophylaxis and chronic management. So, first of all, who needs prophylaxis? Is it everyone? The answer is no. If the patient has toe file on presentation, or they have recurrence more than two times every year, or if they have complications like nephrolithiasis or their uric acid secretion in the urine is above 1.1 gram per day, then you can give them allopurinol, which is preferred over probenicid. Now, important point to mention here, if you give a patient allopurinol or probenicid, you are causing uric acid to acutely drop from the blood, which means the already made uric acid crystals around the bones, they will release their uric acid as a compensation. And this release will cause uric acid to deposit in the joints, and this will cause acute gouty flares secondary to starting uric acid lowering medications. So these patients, when you start them on prophylaxis, you need to give them medicine to prevent the prophylaxis management from causing acute gouty flares. And these include NSAIDs, steroids, or colchicine. And you want to continue this medicine for around 6 to 12 months, with colchicine being the preferred medicine to use in these patients. Now, if allopurinol or probenicid fail in preventing acute gout attacks, then you can try the more fancy ones like febaxostat or piclotocase. And again, you can refer to the gout medicine video for more details about these medications. Now, one last thing is, if the patient is pregnant and they have acute gout flare, then you can't use NSAIDs nor colchicine, and the drug of choice will be steroids in these patients. And that's it for gout. Hope you guys learned something, and see you in the next one.